Pre-mastering is essentially a way to get a preview of how your final mix will sound once it's mastered. Is that you're gonna put a bunch of processors thinking that the master engineer, that's what he's gonna put in that amount and in that order, and then you what? You adjust your mix based on what you think the master engineer is gonna use and how he's gonna use it? How, how idiotic that is. <laughs> I can't even. Why don't we start a series of fun videos? David reacts. Today we react to a plugin company newsletter that I got and I'm pretty sure many of you got as well. That talks about mastering, pre-mastering and one knob mastering. Let's get to it. Hello everyone, welcome back to Miss Best TV. Hope you're having a great day. Before we start, please check the info box down below for my mixing courses on Pro Mix Academy, free plugin, special discounts and offers. And of course, if you really wanna learn how to mix and master professionally, click the join button down here, become a Mix Best TV member, access the already big and always growing library of full mixing courses, start to finish on many different genres. Mastering courses, a new one is coming, special videos and a lot more. And if the videos are helping you, please consider using the new feature, the super thanks and support the channel. Let's get to the video. If you want me to do a fun reaction video on anything audio related, like an audio myth video, a blog post, a video, send me stuff. But in this video, I'm gonna react to a newsletter that I got from a plugin company, a big plugin company. And we all get those newsletter promoting a new product, a new technique, new blog post, a new plugin. And they're usually like, you want perfect vocals? Do these three things. You want a perfect mix? Use this plugin. And we know that's probably not gonna happen, but we're still gonna read it and maybe take some good information out of it. But sometimes, just like in this case, they make no sense whatsoever. And I think everybody has to do advertisement and marketing, that's fine, but I feel there is a line. And when you go from that to straight up misinformation and BS, that rubs me the wrong way. Especially when a big company or an influencer or whatever that is, the sense of the newsletter has a wide reach and many newbies in their readers. So let's take a look at this one, which was titled, Do You Pre-Master Your Mixes? And <laughs> that in itself already makes no sense. There's no such thing as pre-master. That is a made up term. What the heck pre-master is supposed to be? There's two stages, mixing and mastering. There's not an intermediate stage that is called pre-mastering, that doesn't exist. Some people refer to pre-master what they do on the two bus, but that's not mastering and that's not pre-mastering, that's mixing. Your compression, your EQ, your saturation, your whatever you have on your two bus, the Easter Bunny, that's mixing, that's not mastering, okay? It starts by saying, hey David, the process of mixing and production has changed a ton over the past few decades. Within our mixing world of producers and engineers, the younger generation who grew up in home studios and with DAWs tend to view the start to finish process a bit differently than the older generation who were raised in the age of analog. I don't think it's a matter of generation. I think it's a matter of either you are an amateur and you do everything by yourself at home, or you are a professional or a semi-professional who has engineers that do the job professionally for them. So it has very little to do with this. The new generation has access to a start to finish chain if they want to just put out a product, which most likely won't be up to par with commercial level. That's why people like me have channels and teach people how to do the job. One way you can usually tell where the generational fault lines are is by how someone views the processing of mastering. Gen Xers and boomers tend to see it as a separate stage from mixing meant for separate engineers. They don't tend to see it. They know that that's how it's done and has been done for decades up until now. Millennials and Gen Z tend to see it as just another part of the mixing process they do themselves. That's not mastering. That's just you doing processing on your two bus or you open another project and you import your mix and you call it mastering. Why do you even bother? Because again, it's still your ears, your brain, your skills, your tools and you don't have a fresh perspective and you will never have a fresh perspective. What's your take? How do you approach mastering? It says the email. Pro tip, you don't need to choose. Okay, 
surprise me. I'm what they call an ex lenial Oh my God. The micro generation that straddles in the line between Gen X and millennials. And true to form, I see it both ways. I, <laughs> I think that line was completely unnecessary, but let's keep going. Pre-mastering, the best of both worlds. That makes no sense, man. That makes absolutely no sense. And then why, if even existed, would be the best of both worlds? What both worlds? Using a mastering engineer or mastering yourself? That's not the best of both worlds. It's either one or the other. But hold on. I can't help but think of mastering as a separate stage of the mix process. Hey, we got a point. It's too important to treat as simply as another track to mix. But I also pre-master my mixes to get a head start. And here is where the problem starts. This is what we call a false premise. I also pre-master my mixes to get a head start. You know what? It, I know that People like me, they already know where this is going. <laughs> I already know you guys know where this is going. This, <laughs> I don't want to offend nobody, but it's uh, really not smart. Let's keep reading. You'll understand why. Pre-mastering is essentially a way to get a preview of how your final mix will sound once it's mastered. <sighs> So, are you mastering your mixes or are you sending it to a mastering engineer? Because if you're mastering your own mixes, there's not a way to preview how your final mix will sound once it's mastered because you're basically mastering it already, right? Because if you're putting on your two bus what you would put later on in the mastering Pro Tools project or whatever DAW you're using, that's completely useless. You're just opening another project because you feel better about having a dedicated mastering project. And then, well, you're going to transfer all the plugins that you had there in the other project. That's it. How useless is that? You can skip that <laughs> a dedicated project altogether because you already did everything in your mix. Just print the freaking mix and go, right? If you're using a mastering engineer, trying to get a preview of how your mix is gonna sound when mastered is the stupidest thing I've ever heard. <laughs> First of all, you're paying a mastering engineer because it's taste and it's choices and it's experience. That's the reason because you're paying a mastering engineer, okay? Then you also pay a master engineer because he has a room that is tuned, has speakers, there are up to par, has the analog gear, has tools that most likely you don't have. So what are you doing is you're assuming, you're assuming that your mastering engineer are going to apply whatever processes you're putting on your two bus to mimic the master. All right. So let's say you, you think that your mastering engineer is going to put EQ, is going to put compression, is going to put saturation, is going to put stereo widening, and is going to put limiting. Okay. First of all, fuck do you know what he's going to do? Because if you knew, you'd do it yourself. All right, he's got better tools than me. So I'm, I'm letting him fine tune and use the best tools and the best monitoring system. Okay, fair enough. But then you don't know if he's going to apply EQ, where, how, how much, when, if he's going to put compression or not, how much, what are the settings, what, what's everything. So not only you're assuming the processes, you're assuming the amount, and you're doing this knowing that the mastering engineer that you use has different tools. So he's not going to use the EQ, the compressor, the saturator, the whatever, the limiter that you have. So it's an exercise in futility, 100% waste of time. But that wouldn't be the problem. It's your time. You want to waste it, waste it the way you want. The problem is that you're going to put a bunch of processors, right? thinking that the master engineer, that's what he's going to put in that amount and in that order. And then you what? You adjust your mix 
based on what you think the master engineer is going to use and how he's going to use it. How, how idiotic that is. <laughs> but in this case, try to see the future and see what the master engineer is going to do and then adjust the mix. If you can see the future, whoever wrote the newsletter, man, what are you doing mixing? Just go back on sports event. Didn't back in the future taught you anything? But you're not. You can't see the future. So this exercise in futility here to get a preview of how your mix is going to sound later, it's complete BS. Let's keep reading. The more you'll notice that when you start applying plugins to your mix bus, it will change the sound of the track you already mixed. While you can do fine tuning when you're like about the end of the mix or advanced, that stuff on your two bus, you should set it up beforehand. Of course, that's what it's supposed to do, but sometimes it will do so in unpredictable ways that cause you to go back and readjust what you did earlier to your individual tracks. I mean, <laughs> whoever wrote this has very little experience here. Because again, what I just said, you set your two bus usually at the beginning. Some engineers don't and leave it for when, when they are, let's say, 70% uh, of the mix. But they do that because they have experience. And so the behavior of the compressor, the saturator, the EQ, the whatever that is that they put on the two bus is beyond predictable. They know exactly what they are going to get. Otherwise, they will not do it. So when he says sometimes it will do in such unpredictable ways, that is stuff that happens to people that is very inexperienced and also have a very faulty thought process, right? Because no matter what you do, you mix, you master, no matter what you do, you don't slap processes, analog plugins, just cause you decide now I need a compressor for this reason, either to solve a problem or because I know I can make this sound better. So this tells me I'm just going to put the stuff on the two bus because I, what, I heard I have to, and then they change unpredictably my mix. So why the fuck do you put those processors in the first place? If you like your mix and then you put the stuff on your two bus and it changes it unpredictably, and you have to go back and adjust why you put the stuff in the first place. It makes absolutely no, no sense whatsoever. Wrong thought process in the first place and shows just inexperience. Let's keep going. This is one of the pitfalls of mastering your own mixes. And in the same session, you can get into a back and forth between what you do to your mix bus versus what you did while mixing the individual tracks. All right, obviously this person is very confused and he doesn't know the difference between two bus processing and mastering. That's, at this point, is digested, okay? This is one of the pitfalls of mastering your own mixes and, this, and in the same session. Dude, if you're mastering on the same session or on a different session, it doesn't change anything. Like I said, it's still you, your skills, your ears, your room, your tools, and your everything. It doesn't change anything. If you get into a back and forth between what you do in your mix bus and your individual tracks, that's a problem. Now, look, I'm not saying you can't, and I'm not saying that it doesn't happen, that you kind of readjust things here and there. Mixing doesn't start from track at the top and ends at the track at the bottom, and it's just a linear process. Never, all right? You start with whatever you start. Some people start with vocals, some people start with drums, and so on. And then, you know, you do gain staging, you put your two-bus processing in it, and of course you go back and forth. It's a normal thing though. In fact, that's why it's highly advised to put your two bus compression, if you use two bus compression, it's not a given, right after you did gain staging. And then throughout the mix, when you have a rough mix that is most likely balanced and leveled already, you always level match your tracks before and after compression, before and after EQ, before and after saturation. And sometimes it happens, especially when you use hardware, right? That you want to push the hardware a little more and then you go back and readjust a little bit <laughs> the settings of your uh, two bus compressor. You know, maybe you want a little more low end for this mix and you move the internal sidechain HPF, right? Or you want, maybe it's grabbing a little too much and you want a little ra less ratio, but you don't mix your track and then slap a two bus compressor that 
of course, is going to change everything. And then what you do, you stubbornly decide to leave that compressor there. Why? And go back and change all your balance. Of course, you're going to go back and forth and you're going to go back and forth for a long time. It's basically you're mixing the song twice because the stupid thing you just did and <laughs> you didn't have to. This is like such a faulty thought process. And this is why it rubs me the wrong way. It starts from so many false premises. And this is newsletter sends out to hundreds of thousands of people. And a lot of those people are newbies. And I'm like, dude, seriously, like seriously, maybe get someone that can read something useful because you can promote a plugin while giving good information and maybe new techniques or something like that. Hey, I do it all the time, okay? I mean, come on. That's why some mixers start processing their mix bus early on before they finished mixing or even from the start. Thank God. To understand how the mix moves they make now will sound once the track is mastered later, no matter who ends up mastering it. Oh my God. <laughs> he just, he, <laughs> he does one step forward and three steps back in the same sentence. Ah, you almost said something right. So it starts very well, right? So mixing engineers start their mix bus, setting up their mix bus at the beginning, like many. To understand how the mix moves they make now, will sound once the track is mastered later. Let's stop here. Your two bus compression, it does not belong to mastering. The fact that you compress your mix at the two bus doesn't mean that the mastering engineer will either compress it or not compress it. It will not give a damn what you did, if you have compression or not. He will not know, he will not care. He will listen to the mix and decide, because that's why you pay a master engineer if it needs compression. And guess what? The tool itself, the compressor, and the settings that a master engineer is going to use to master your track are going to be different from what compressor you use on the 2Bus and the settings you use on 2Bus. And this bleeds into the other bullshit, right? If you mix with a compressor, you should remove it before sending it to a master engineer. That's, I, I'm not even gonna comment that. So again, not only he doesn't know the difference, but he thinks that the two bus processing is there to try to get an idea of how the track is gonna sound mastered. That's a double whammy. Two bus processing is there to make the mix sound good, regardless the mastering, who's gonna do it, what, what they're gonna use. It's part of mixing. It's not there for you to try to see the future. And here's another pretty idiotic thought. Through this entire email so far, it made it sound like mastering it actually makes your track sound worse. It causes so many problems that you have to retouch your mix beforehand. It, it does sound like this, right? Because it, through the entire email, it's saying we need to understand how it's gonna sound master so we can retouch the mix. So if the master is gonna make the mix sounds worse, why do you even do it? <laughs> you know why it, sound, it makes it sound worse? Because you're mastering your own shit, that's why. Give it to a good master <laughs> engineer and the result should be, and it's probably gonna be better than the mix. But obviously, this is not the premise this email starts from because it, it sounds like you have to fix the problems that master is going to create. I, I can't even. To understand how the mix moves they make now will sound once the track is mastered later, no matter who ends up mastering it. <laughs> no, 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 no. It matters a lot who's going to master it at the end. I'm not going to repeat what I basically said this entire video. The difference between you mastering it and a master engineer mastering it, it's probably the difference between if you do it, you're going to cause problems that you're going to now try to solve in a mix, and master engineer is going to give you a better version of your mix. So no, it does matter who's going to master it at the end. But what then should be placed on the mix bust if we are not yet at the mastering stage? EQ, compression, limiting? No need to think so hard. Just use this plugin. 
just use this plugin, okay? Which it's fine. We all have to promote shit. This was a mastering plugin, apparently, with one knob. So we are reducing <laughs> mastering to a one knob plugin. Keep that in mind. It's important for later because it's important for later. The first question you might be wondering when you look at this plugin is how can all these fine details of mastering be dumbed down into just one knob? Fair question. I asked it myself when the plugin first came out. Then someone told me to try the demo and I understood how smart this plugin really was. Really? How can all the fine detail of mastering can be dumbed down to just one knob? Here's the real answer. It can't. It can't. It's gonna be a freaking preset. Maybe two, three, four processes under the hood. And even if you could dumb down thousands, probably hundreds of thousands, variables of a mastering, a single mastering session from the order of what you use between plugins and hardware, what amount, what everything, right? Even if you could do that, which is impossible, you miss, again, the main reason to get your stuff mastered. Plugin X takes three basic processes involved with mastering EQ compression and analog saturation and puts them all together as one synchronized process that you can easily control with one knob. Just what I just said. As you turn the knob up, it turns up all three processes proportionally making it's turning them up in relation to one another. And yes, it really works. I bet $10 then it doesn't, or better. It works at what it does. You add a little bit of brightness, a little bit of saturation, and you're done. You're, you're just, if, you're, if you don't have trained ears, you already think it's better. The only thing it doesn't include is a limiter, since that's usually something you want to keep separate. But if you want to fast track the mastering process entirely without worrying about using a bunch of other plugins, you can put plugin X on your mix bus, follow it by plugin Z, which is a limiter, and call it a day. However, even if your goal isn't to master your mix at this point, or you plan on sending your mix to a separate master engineer, which is the same thing, you can still use plugin X to make your mixes sound their best by using it for pre-mastering. No. <laughs> You're putting a little bit of EQ and saturation on and compression on your mix. Automated, right? Preset of which you have no control. You have just a blend knob, an, an intensity knob, let's put it this way. So you maybe you're better off learning how if you're if this is what you're doing because you're mixing your own stuff right this mail is catered to people who are mixing their own mixes and even mastering their own mixes so learn how to use an EQ a saturator and a compressor and just tweak it to its best that's how you make your mixes sound their best by tailoring each process to your mix and not use a preset that's not your best that's a, let's call it a day type of process. It ends like this and it's again infuriating. Plugin X offers the perfect solution for pre-mastering again, because it's a no brainer plugin that gives you an idea of how your mix is going to sound mastered before you even finish mixing it. Oh my God, oh my God. <laughs> uh, at the end of the day, he said previously, no need to think so hard just use this. And so you don't have to think about the individual effects. And he ends up saying it's a no-brainer that gives you an idea how your mix is gonna sound mastered before you even finish mixing, which is, how can you, how can you hear how your mix is gonna sound mastered before you finish the mix? Like, <laughs> it, this is like mastering a beat, you remember? Mastering a beat and then adding the vocals after, like, this is not just semantic, by the way. This is concept. These are important concepts. I mean, this goes out to, like I said, thousands of people. Like, come on. Simply insert it on your two bus early in the mixing process. No need to wait until the end. You also don't need to apply it heavily. Just a little bit of X early on goes a long way later because you are already mixing with a preview of how it will sound when mastered. Again, hammering this BS, eliminating the need for a lot of back and forth once you apply your final mastering plugins. So what the heck are you gonna do? You're gonna put this thing there, mix the track to have a general idea of how it's gonna sound when mastered, then remove it, 
and put other plugins to master it, this is insanity. <laughs> You don't even need to use plugin X in your final master. So it is insanity. If you want, you can eventually replace it with any other mastering plugins or give it to a dedicated mastering engineer. That's beyond crazy. By using plugin X lightly early on while mixing your individual tracks will help you get to a better sound in master in the end no matter what you end up choosing as your final mastering plugin chain. How? How the fuck is, is putting this plugin lightly on your two bus help you get a better sounding master, not even mix, at the end, no matter what you end up choosing as your final mastering plugin chain? Dude, <laughs> this, is, this is just crazy misinformation and it just muddy the water for the people that are trying to learn or they're trying to get their music out they can't afford a master engineer and they read this and if somehow they can wrap their head around the the back and forth and the contradictions on this email they come out of this so freaking confused and what they're gonna do they're gonna try this and obviously it's not gonna work and they're gonna do like what am i doing wrong which is fine you know what it's fine it's i mean they're probably gonna call a professional to do it. So you're maybe helping me out here, but it's not right. Why you have to write something like this to promote a plugin? Why there's, look, call me, all right? I can tell you there's a way and how to teach people to use this plugin. People who don't wanna dig into a thousand processor can't, don't have the time, don't have the skills, they don't know, whatever that is, but being a little less slimy and a little less unethical and because <laughs> this is going to confuse a lot of people and there's a lot of misinformation here which is the reason because i opened the channel so this rubbed me really the wrong way now remember what i said can all the mastering process can be dumbed out to one knob yes it can okay yes it can the same company also sells a mastering course this is what the master engineer that they use for the course has in front of them. And all that is in a perfectly tuned mastering room with mastering speakers. Oh! So <laughs> you see that things don't add up here, right? So you're selling a mastering course that shows all this. And then you say that all this can be dumbed down to a one knob plugin. So which one is which? And again, I'm being a little hard here, but, but again, I'm not hating on the plugin, which most likely is useful for whatever. I mean, there's a lot of off-label uses that we find for gear, plugin, whatever that is. It's all the write-up that goes with, you know, trying to advertise this plugin, which is really BS. And <laughs> I just... I just, when I read it, I was like, dude, no, just, just no, you know? <laughs> but anyway, I want to know what you guys think in the comments down below. And if you want me to do reaction videos on anything regarding music business, audio product, or videos, blog posts, anything, anything that you want me to react to, please send it to me and we'll see if we can get some fun videos. Before you go, please vote for Bella for the Odyssey contest. She has been number one since the first day, thanks to all of you guys. And we are now going in top five and we still need your votes every day. It's free, it takes a minute until the contest is done. Thank you so much. Leave your comments down below, like the video if you liked it. Please consider using the super thanks and support Mixbus TV. Subscribe if you haven't already, stay safe and see you next time. Ah!